Hello and good afternoon CSI 158 section 841 and 847 students for the second eight week term at Anne Arundel Community College in the Cisco Networking Academy curriculum and this is the routing and switching essentials course. Today's packet tracer tutorial activity is going to be on packet tracer 7.3.2.3 which is a continuation or sort of a, uh, an outgrowth of the packet tracer we just did on IPv4. This is going to be IPv6 RIP configuration. And so let's jump right in. As you can see here we have our addressing table and we're going to configure RIPNG and then verify connections. Alright, so the background is important here. RIPNG, which stands for RIP Next Generation, is a distance vector protocol for routing IPv6 addresses. It's based on RIPv2, has the same administrative distance, which is 120, and a 15 hop count limitation. So this activity, more than anything, is to simply familiarize you with configuring RIPNG. And as you'll see here, it basically provides us with the configuration steps that we need to do. And so let's go to router 1. We'll pull up our CLI. And we'll go from user exec mode into privilege exec and then into global config. And the first thing we need to do on each of the three routers is we're going to go ahead and configure and enable the routers to perform IPv6 routing. And so that command is IPv6 space unicast dash routing. And so now we've enabled IPv6 routing on router 1. Now what we're going to do is enter the RIPNG protocol, protocol configuration mode. And so I'm going to go ahead and type in IPv6 router RIP and then I'm entering in the word Cisco. And so what I'm doing there is I'm basically creating the identifier for this IPv6 RIP instance. Okay, and now you'll notice it dropped us down into router config mode. And so at this point we would enable RIP on the networks that connect to R1, but specifically the interfaces which are associated with those processes or those networks where we want to run RIP. So we'll go interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0. And then I'm going to type in IPv6 RIP and then the name of the RIP NG process, which is Cisco, and then enable. And sometimes you'll see that referred to as the domain the word Cisco that is. Okay, so we're gonna hit enter. Now I'm gonna go into the next interface I want to configure which is serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and again we'll type in IPv6 RIP Cisco enable. Alright, and so now we're gonna go ahead and type end. I'm gonna do write mem to save my configuration. So now when I do show IP route, you'll notice I didn't type in IPv6. We've got there's nothing there, but if I type show IPv6, let's see if we see anything. Okay, well we definitely have some routes here for IPv6. We've got our connected routes, and we also have our local routes that are associated with those, and we have our link local, or I apologize, not the link local. We've got basically the interface, the local interface that's going to go out to null zero. Okay, so that is our router one configuration. Now let's pull up router 2 and remember router 1 did not see anything in terms of RIP NG routes being advertised. Alright for a user exec we'll go to privilege exec and then in the global config first thing we want to do is enable IPv6 with the IPv6 unicast routing command and then from here I'm going to type in IPv6 router RIP and then the Cisco keyword all right, and then we're going to drop into the interfaces and let's take a look at each of the interfaces we're going to configure. So it's going to be serial 000, serial 001, and gig 00. So let me pull this back here real quick. Okay, so we'll do inter gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 first. We'll type in IPv6, rip, Cisco, enable. 
then we'll switch to serial 000, or we'll type in IPv6 RIP Cisco enable. And I'm just using the up arrow here, recalling the previous commands to save myself some typing. And now we have configured RIPNG on router 2. So let's save the configuration here. And now let's take a look. Let's take a look and see. Do we see anything when I do a show IP route? We would expect we will not, right? Because we're not doing IPv4. If I type show IPv6 route, we do. And in fact, now we're on router 2, you can see right here, and now this is interesting, we can now see we've learned this network, 2001 DB8 colon 1 colon 1 colon colon 64. So we're learning about this network over here behind R1, and it says via FE80 colon colon 1. And that just happens to be the link local address for this interface. And so, whoops. And so if I roll back up, or actually, let me go ahead and do a show run, right? You can see that my gig 00 and then my serial interfaces, where are we at here? So the serial interfaces have a link local address of FE80 colon colon 2 because we're on router 2. And so again, this is very similar to what we saw with IPv4, where it tells us the R indicates that it's learning this network, right, from the RIP routing protocol, RIPNG in this case. Administrative distance is 120. And also, please keep in mind that the hop count is 2. Now, IPv4 would report this hop count as 1. However, in this case, IPv6 counts the existing, the router that you're on, right, or the router that you're seeing things from, that you've got the perspective of router 2, it counts that router as a hop. So it is 1 and then 2. And so that's why IPv6 is going to put the metric at 2, because it sees it as 1 hop, 2 hops. Via FE80 colon colon 1, that's the link local address for the serial interface here on router 1, and we're learning it from serial, it's coming in serial 000. So again, very similar to IPv4. And again, router R1 is only advertising a single network, right, to us, because this is directly connected, okay? So we don't see that network, or we don't see this network here being reported as coming or learned from RIP, it's being learned because it's directly connected. And you can see that interface is A001DB8, this guy right here. And it's directly connected. And then here is your local entry for that. And it's A001 colon colon 2. And again, this is the global unicast. You'll notice we don't see the, the link local address reported here. It's going to show us the global unicast. All right. So that was router 2, and let's go ahead, and I can't remember, so always a good idea to do a write mem, and we'll save that off there. Now let's pull up router 3. All right, so here is router 3. We'll go to privilege exec mode from user exec in the global config. We need to enable IPv6 unicast routing. And then the next thing we need to do is declare that it's going to be we're going to go into the RIP NG configuration mode, router RIP. All right. And so now we're going to do the same configuration that we've done on the other two routers. However, before we do that, if I do a do show IPv6 route, you'll notice that router 3 still only sees its directly connected networks. So similar to the IPv4 video, Let's pull up router 2, and we're going to do a debug now. Very similar, right? We can't do debug IP. We want debug IPv6, and it doesn't look like it's going to allow us to take a look at the RIP information here when we try to debug. It's only going to allow inspect and OSPF. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see these things happen uh, in real time, if you were on, and this is an 1841 router, and let me exit out here and let me do IPv6 unicast routing, 
And so if I were to type in the same commands that we've been typing in, which would be, let me make sure I get this right here. So IPv6 router rip. So if I were to type in IPv6 router rip and then Cisco, right? And if I do a question mark, you can see we've got quite a few different commands to choose from, right? So, but if all I wanted to do was type in IPv or debug, oops, apologize, let me back one up here. So if I wanted to do the debug IPv6 with a question mark, you can see that down here in Packet Tracer, when we do the debug IPv6, we have the inspect option and the OSPF option. But clearly, in the real world, on a Cisco router and with Cisco IOS, you, as you can see, you clearly have many, many more choices here. We have EIGRP, OSPF, and then there's RIP, and then a number of other choices that are in between, right? So in the real world, you would be able to do a debug here and capture the information that you would be looking to get. All right, so we'll have to leave that for now. We're not going to be able to do a debug here. So let's just go with the show IPv6 route so we can see what a routing table looks like now. Let me jump onto router three and finish up here. So we've done the router rip Cisco, or the IPv6 router rip Cisco. So now we want to go ahead and pull the interfaces in. And very similar to router one, we're going to be looking at serial 001, and I believe this is going to be gig 00. And it is. Okay. So we would go ahead and then enable the rip ng process on those interfaces. So I'll do gig 00 first. IPv6, RIP, and Cisco enable. So we're going to enable the process on that interface. We're going to change to the serial 001 interface. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that same command again. IPv6, RIP, Cisco enable. And then I'll type in. We're going to save our information here. And now, let me slide this guy back over. I'm going to pull up router 2. So now on this guy, on router 3, if I do a show IPv6 route, as you can see, I'm learning three routes via RIP. So I'm learning the route here for the 2001 DB8 colon 1 colon 1 colon colon 64. I'm learning 2001 DB8 colon 2 colon colon slash 64. And then I'm also learning about the network here, 2001 DB8 colon 1 colon a001 slash 64 so I'm learning about this route here I'm learning about this route here colon 1 and I'm learning about colon 2 right and so let's take a look at that a001 right which is this route here between router 1 and router 2 I'm learning about the network that sits behind the db8 colon 1 colon 2 that sits behind router 2 and then this network here sits behind router 1. And again, similar to IPv4, you'll notice that there's no entry, no RIP entry per se, for DB8 colon 1 colon A002, because again, this is directly connected. And so this is the route that's going to be inserted into the routing table, is the one that's directly connected. Okay, so again, very simple exercise to walk you through the IPv6 configuration for RIP NG. And now let's go ahead and let's make sure that we've got full connectivity. So let me scroll back up here. We've got the routers, but we don't have the PCs listed. So every device should be able to ping every other device. And so I'd have to take a look here and see. Let's make sure we can ping from R3 to R one and my IPv6 configuration. So there's your address. It's going to be colon one colon one colon colon A. So I'll pull this guy up here. And so let's do a ping 2001 colon DB8 colon one colon one colon colon. Let me double check that real quick. Colon colon A. And let's see if we can ping. And again, we have great success here. So we're able to ping from PC3 to PC1, and so we've confirmed our connectivity. All right, again, this has been Packet Tracer Activity 7.3.2.3, and I hope that you have found this video tutorial helpful. I'll see you all this week.